I'm Mike Austin. I'd like to introduce to you Mike Dunaway. He is probably the longest hitter that has ever lived. He has won numerous driving contests all over the world. He's my personal friend, and we are going to explain to you the principles, the latest principles, dealing with how a golf swing is constructed. Now, I'm going to tell you something about golf. Over 700 years ago, the Hollanders introduced golf. It was then called K-O-double-F. Now, cough was the word, but the Scots popularized the game of golf, and they changed it from cough to golf, and is played now all over the world. There have been as many different systems of teaching as there are golfers and golf pros in the world. If you went to work for a pro, you had to teach what the man told you to teach or else you were fired. So they were able to teach these different ways according to the pro's whims since its inception. But in the last 25 years, there's been a definite change. It's going to more science. They were dealing first with physics, then they went into the geometry of the swing, and then it incorporated kinesiology. Kinesiology is a scientific analyzation of muscular motion. And with this, we're able to control the joints of the skeletal system, the muscles that cause the joints to move, and the nerve that stimulate the muscles for the operation of the golf swing. This science is so precise, and it isn't something that we're guessing now. We can take an electromyograph and attach it to the various muscles and tell what muscle stimulates to cause the actions in the joints you want and how long it stays in stimulation before it's relaxed. And with this knowledge that we have, it's so precise, and, and with the machine, the electromyograph machine, to verify that which we are talking about, Mike Dunaway and I will be telling exactly how the golf swing is constructed. He will demonstrate. I will explain. I'm going to turn the mic over now to Mr. Dunaway. Thank you, buddy. Well, that was a nice introduction, and I appreciate the kind words. And, and uh, what success I've been able to accomplish in the golf business is directly due to the gentleman sitting right next beside me. In my opinion, Michael Austin is at least 20 years ahead of anything that's ever been done in any kind of teaching in golf. Michael, uh, not only does he have one of the finest golf swings in the world, one of his Tremendous achievements as he holds a Guinness Book of World Record for the longest drive ever hit, 515 yards in Las Vegas. But he has a tremendous working knowledge and one of the most beautiful golf swings in the whole world. He has degrees in kinesiology, physics, engineering, two years of medicine. And with what he mentioned a while ago, it is absolutely the most incredible study that I personally have ever been involved with in golf. Not only is is the is the most effective but it is the most efficient way in the entire world to swing a golf club but you can get more out of less with what we're fixing to explain to you over the next probably several hours but i'm really honored to be a part for him to choose me to be a part of this presentation because i really believe that it could be a turning point in the golf instruction world you know you look at golf and we've got oh in the united states close to 25 million people that play and I'd have to say that 95% of them slice a ball. I'd have to say that only, you know, 5% of them can, can break 90. And so you have to take a look at what's really taught, you know, from the initial point. And there's two or three major points that will be discussed in this video that I think that will totally change the initial move and the overall pattern of what's really done in the golf swing. And like I say, I'm very honored to be a part of this presentation. I'm going to be doing the... Uh, a lot of the demonstration and Mike was going to be commenting but we're going to use more or less kind of a laid-back question and answer thing that we used in my teaching 
And the one thing that I can do that Michael can't do, he can't, he, he can't represent a student's view. So I have several hundred questions, which I will be asking him. And uh, through the process, he's going to be pushing me, turning me, prodding me. And we're going to get to the bottom of the exact movements of a golf swing. What this will do in the, in the golf world, where all golf instruction gets a little bit crazy, is kind of fact versus feel. Well, this video is going to go beyond feel. This is going to make, we're going to be accountable for every single movement that we do in the golf swing, and it will be based on irrefutable, unarguable facts. There won't be anybody talking about physics or physiology or leverage or according to physics without really understanding exactly what those words mean. Uh, some of the terminologies that you'll hear will be a little bit new, but they're absolutely accurate right online. And this videotape will give you years and years. I have, over the years, I probably have 16, 17 hours of tape of Michael and myself. And I go back over it. I learn something every single day. Even today, we're working before we get ready to, I'm incorporating something a little bit, just a little bit of a, a new thing. It's, it's just tremendous. You know, the, I just feel like this, this teaching method gives you the, the advantage that you will need. There's no way not to become a better golfer and have an understanding. It's different. A lot of people take golf lessons to learn. I never realized when, when I was learning from Mike that I would end up being a, what I feel like is I have a lifelong uh, livelihood in teaching. Uh, it's just a superior way to look at motion. And Michael Austin is, well, I'll, at the risk of repeating myself, is by far the most qualified golf instructor that the world has ever seen. You know, in my brief career, um, I've had the opportunity to literally go all over the world. And I think probably the most impressive thing that I've, I personally have ever seen is, of course, my dear friendship with Michael here and, and our association of teaching things. But uh, this year, Michael's 84. But from the time he was 76 to the time he was 80 years old, I had the privilege of playing probably 50 rounds of golf with him. And during that time, we also went to 12 different cities around the world, uh, four or five places here in the United States and in Japan during various long drive contests. Now think about this. Between the, when the time he was 76 to the time he was 80, over a period of time, over 12 competitions, he averaged 308 yards in a competitive circumstance, situation. Uh, and during that time when I had the opportunity to play with Michael, I can honestly say I only saw him probably in 50 rounds of golf literally hit one or two what I would call bad shots. He had the most efficient, most powerful looking easy, fluid, supple, supple technique that I've ever seen in my life that I've literally dedicated myself to trying to swing exactly like him. And, and some of the, some of the things that, that are just, that, that he has such a tremendous advantage on over the rest of the, the golfing business is his knowledge. And some of the questions that I would like to ask Mike today is, Mike, you know, in the analyzation of motion, why is a background of not only necessarily like learning about motion itself, the human body, but how, how important is it to combine all those, like specifically uh, kinesiology? Well, kinesiology deals with the basically the locomotion of the human body. If you walk, if you run, if you chin, if you shot put, if you throw a baseball, you kick a football, that all are analyzed through kinesiology. We know exactly the first point of stimulation, how long it was in stimulation, then how the, how the secondary motion came in until you complete the action. Well, in studying this, and you can put it on film, and you can see it shot back, and then having in mind the stimulation and the degree the, the joints bend according to the muscular, you know, stimulation you can see how you attain balance. Balance you get through the feet. Motion you get out of the 12 joints, dealing with the ankles, the knees, the hips, the shoulders, elbow, and wrist. If you cut off the legs and cut off the arms, you're like a wiener down there. You can't move. <laughs> you, you might live a month because you couldn't feed yourself. You couldn't drink water. I think if you... Three weeks is the longest anybody can go without water. I think there's been someone about that time. But 
You can go a month, a month and a half without food. But just think, everybody thinks the body is making all this motion. The, the action of your feet, the ankles, knees, and hips control the action of your torso. Now, the shoulders are basically the top of your torso, your hips are bottom. Now, on top of that, you have a head. That's the thinking division of this human body. Now, we decide what we want to do with what motion, whether you're going to run, you're going to jump, you're going to do a form of athletic swim, Basketball, football, baseball, it all deals with these appendages. And not too many people has put the emphasis on the legs and the hands and the arms to create balance and timing. Timing is one of the most important parts of a golf swing. Your body can only move so fast. And the average person in the pro ranks take two seconds to make a golf swing if they use a two count, a one, two. And it's all taking about one second each. The back swing from the ball to the top of the back swing, the club head is traveling 240 degrees. The left arm will separate from the ball 150 and you cock your hands 90 degrees and you have 240 degrees. Well, it's, if it's 204 degrees to the top of the backswing, it's 204 degrees back to the ball, then it's 240 degrees on the other side. So you are taking the club back 240 degrees, and to complete the circle, you're doing 480. Now, the time it takes from the ball to the top of the backswing is one second. That's about a, as fast as the body should move. And it time from the top of the backswing to the finish is one second. Therefore, the body is moving twice as fast and along with the the arms and the hands. Mm -hmm. You see, we control the blade with the hands. We set it on plane. When you're standing to address the ball, only thing is on plane is the club face. But when you go back, you have to put the shaft on plane, and you do it with the hands. But while you're doing that, to allow the body to turn the full degree, the knees and ankles, hips and shoulders, elbows and wrists, they've got to coordinate all of this into a single pattern. Yeah, it's got to blend. Blend. It's, it's synchronizing. Now, just think. For the knees to do their count, and this is basically what you're doing when you're timing a golf swing. You're timing the knees and hip action because it's like building a home. You don't put the roof on top of the ground. You put a foundation underneath it, and the foundation of the golf swing is the ankles, knees, and hips. Now, the other six joints that you're very interested in is the wrist, elbows, and shoulder, and shoulder blade. You see, we feel using the shoulders that they're a combination. You know, it's a gliding joint plus a ball and socket joint. The ball and socket joint allows you to make many different actions with the arm. You can do a conical, a semicircle, or you can lift it, and you can laterally or frontal lift and so forth. But it's all done from here. And everything that you do starts in that brain up there. And it's got to be transferred through the nervous system. It's like if you're going to telephone someone, you've got to have first a telephone company to receive your voice and transmit it through the telephone lines to the part of that's receiving your voice. Understand? That's one that you're to talk to. So before you hit a golf ball, you have to pre-think what you want to do. You load the computer. You've got to swing a golf club many, many times to actually develop a trained reflex pattern. Reflex pattern is a pattern that works automatically. While you're learning, it's a conscious effort, but it slows you down. The conscious thinking of various parts of the swing slows down the ultimate 
swinging of the club head. Because in golf, we're not looking for rigid slowness. We're looking for supple quickness. And you get it out of the proper use of the legs and hips and hands. And by doing this, you have control over the action of the face that controls even the height and the distance. It's called how much impetus you put in the club head and how much turn of the club face around the shaft. When you swing a golf club, you're swinging the shaft between the shoulders and the ball called a swing plane. While you're swinging the shaft between the shoulders and the ball, you're turning the club face around the shaft. It comes from a, we call a zero, and we go 90 degrees on the back swing, the turning, the turning of the face of the club. But while you're doing it, you're cocking your wrist. And now to take up the space, account for the space between the shoulders and the arm, there must be a fold of the right elbow. If you didn't, you couldn't reach your left hand when you reached the top of the back swing. If you tried to keep your right arm straight and the wrist straight, there's not a one-piece swing. It's a multiple swing. There's not a single action swing. It's a compound action. This is very important that people understand what a compound action is. It's combining one force with another force. And when you're able to control the plane and the club face, the balance and the timing, you're going to be able to break par. Well, Michael, you know, in the, in the study of the analysis of the swing, you know, the summary that you just gave us on specific positions and how far the club separates and stuff, we'll be visually demonstrating all the information. Sometimes it's hard for a person to get a, a clear mental image of what's going on. And I never will forget, in our first lessons, you broke down how people actually learn and how visual a physical movement or a physical sport is in mental images. What was the exact percentages that, you know, people learn by visual? What, what were those? Well, visual is 87%. Audio is seven. Feel is three. The smell is one and a half, and the taste is one and a half. So the difference between 87, which is the visual, and seven, which is the tactile feel, the percentage of seven to 87 is, is the ratio, and the smell and taste one and a half. That would kind of explain how when, you know, the, the senior players who are out on the senior tour today, like when they were growing up and yourself, that they didn't spend a lot of time with still photography and stuff. They literally just looked at classic motions all the time. It's almost like, you know, I know when I go to a professional tournament or I have the ability, you know, to look, go over some of our videotapes, I can just look at you swinging and swinging and swinging. And literally for a while, that motion literally just gets on me. That would pretty much explain why such a big part of the learning process is the visual aspect. That's so. You know, most caddies are where the golf pros come from. And by a caddy following the various players that they caddy for and studying their motion, they're able to emulate that. So it isn't they had instructions. It's just they've gotten it by being able to duplicate what they saw. It may not be the best swing, but they can come out with a, a better swing than it would be if they didn't have someone to to be the pilot for them, you know. Mm -hmm. And all the golf pros years ago came from the cutting ranks. Today, most of the golf pros are going into the playing of golf, not so much the teaching. And those people are college graduates. They understand. It's most of the, a great number are taking physical training, such as, well, kinesiology. If they're going to teach things, they have to have it. And when they incorporate kinesiology into the golf teaching, they have some idea how to control this machine that's swinging the golf club. Right. It's your background, you know, not only is in kinesiology, but kinematics, you know, which if you'd like to explain just a little bit. See, well, it's not just knowing what the human body can do, but you, our golf swing is built on 
if there, if a human body was built to swing a golf club, it would look exactly like this, almost machine like. Yes. That is absolutely incredible. I mean, like the the I'm so pumped about you know what we're fixing to do with the pivot. We're going to revolutionize the modern day pivot, you know, and show the just hidden force that's in the human body. See, it's a combination, like I said, of the pivot. And the sh the pivot is twofold. It's the shifting action and a rotating action. But before you can actually rotate, you have to have an axis set up to rotate on. Like in the golf swing, if you're hitting it right-handed, you're standing up there and you're dressed to the ball in the right-handed stunts. But before you can function correctly with the pivot, you've got to have a weight shift from your central balance to a one-leg balance, and then the left side is swinging anterior. That means in front of you. Posterior is behind you. So if you shift to your right leg and you swing your left side like a dot closing into the with that ball, that's the basic concept. But you have to have a supporting element in your swing and a revolving element. And the shift from one leg lets the support happen, and you're freed up on the side that is going to turn. You, you cannot make a circle if you keep both feet on the ground. I'm not trying to get a static grip on the, the ground. I'm, in a, I'm putting myself in a position I can get a kinetic action that is moving my weight onto the right leg and turning the left side. And this gives us a greater shoulder turn, but the shoulder turn is not the prime force. You see, the knees and hip are moving this this salt bag called the torso, you mm -hmm. know, and then the arms are swinging and causing the shoulders to turn. If you try to swing it with the shoulder, your arms with the shoulder, you're trying to shot put it. I will bet anybody they can't take a golf ball, lock the humerus bone to the pec this way and just swing just the body and throw it 50 yards. You can't do it. Which we're, we're going to be, you know, yes. visually demonstrating yeah. along with we'll have a special presentation just a little bit farther on in the tape of an actual Michael in a skeletal suit describing what the six pairs of joints can do. You know, two ankles, two knees, two hips, two elbows, and um, two wrists. So... You know, one of the things that I've found with this motion, this pattern that we work on, is because of the efficiency of it, it's almost like a perfect exercise. It, you know, you just get stronger. Your golf muscles get stronger. And, you know, like the, the stance, which we'll go into in just a, a little bit, uh, you know, your, your body and back is all supported with the proper, you know, working muscles. There's no, you, you're never going to get a back injury. You, you actually get stronger from everything. You see, the average person making a stance, they make it incorrectly. Instead of bending from the ball and socket joints of the hip, they relax the rectus abdominis muscle mm -hmm. and collapse the vertebr front part of the vertebrae against each other, pinching down on the, the sac, this uh, disc between the vertebrae. And it, they'll rub like they call arthritis. You can puncture the... the uh, sack, if you get some of that calcium and then it gets a sharp point, and the liquid, synovial fluid, comes out of the disc, and now you have nothing but trouble because the disc is keeping the nerve from being injured, and it, it does that, keeps the joints from rubbing together. But when you do the stance correctly, bending from the ball and joint of your hips, and it's kind of balancing into your rump, instead of balancing into your knees, remind me of big old hippopotamus trying to <laughs> balance this up on two legs on a swing. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's poor balance. And then when you you make the start of the back swing, most of your weight will come over to your right leg and you feel it more on your right heel. And the left heel will come off the, the ground slightly and the left ankle will evert. Mm -hmm. and that lets the, the left hip come underneath the the left side of the rib cage, giving you a concave action here, and it's shortening the left side so it can come underneath the spine without changing the angle of address of the 
position that you'd taken at the bull. Yeah, well, we'll you know, we're going to be putting motion and visual pictures to all, the, you know, that description, what you just said. And uh, um, what do you think, like, has been the biggest thing, like, when you were learning? You, you told me that uh, one of the fellows that got you started was Stuart Maiden. Who well, used to teach no, I, I just laid out. You know, my father owned a golf course. It was a nine-hole golf course. We had a Scotch pro working for us. Well, I'm six years old, and I go into the shop one day, and it had rained, so there weren't any golfers playing. And I walked in. I was a mean little cat. I mean mean. <laughs> and I, the man hated for me to come into his shop because I disarranged everything there. I asked him, what country you buy this? How much does it cost? How much are you going to sell it for? Who are you going to sell it to? <laughs> you know, it aggravated the tickets out of him. And I said to him this day, since there's nobody playing out there, I says, may I have a lesson today? He says, sure, laddie. He says, I want you to take this much in the bleaks. I want you to walk out to that bank. This bank about six or seven feet tall, and it was muddy. It was kind of red, kind of clayish-looking bank. I want you to stand about a foot away. I want you to swing the club head into that bank. But if you have mud on your sleeve when you come in here, I'm going to kick you right in your back end. <laughs> and it taught me how to release yeah. the shaft and the club head. You can't, you can't make it. If you, your hand don't turn over, your arm will hit. You've mm -hmm. got to uncock your, your hand. Then you have to turn over to make the club get ahead of your arms. Most everybody's trying to pull the, the club through the ball and they'll break the arm. Mm -hmm. But I learned that fast. Now, how I met Stuart Maiden, the teacher of Bobby Jones, I moved into Atlanta, just about a block away from uh, Bobby Jones' home, and mm -hmm. we were about two blocks or so away from East Lake Country Club. Well, I used to go over there and slip in, and he'd catch me. And he, he says, man, he says, you're the most persistent person I've ever seen. He said, I can't keep you off. But if I catch you around here on Saturday or Sunday, I'm on a... Never let you come again. <laughs> and he, he was teaching Bobby Jones, and Bobby Jones has just come in from England, and he had just won the amateur championship over there. And he was having some trouble making the ball go straight. And I also out there decided, Mr. Mike will let me use his balls, and I'd go out and hit the ball while Jones were hitting them, understand? This uh, Stuart Maiden was a very knowledgeable professional. And he called me and said, Laddie, come over here and show this man how to hit. They had a lake there 300 yards long, and we're using wooden shafted club and that leather grip club, very whippy in a way. You have to learn how to roll those arms to keep it in the fairway. So I knocked it over this lake on the fly. <laughs> and and he, Bobby Jones looked rather disgusted, but he said, Laddie, so how did you do that? I said, Mr. Maiden will t tell you how it's done, you know, and I walked away, you know. And that kind of set the foundation for the yeah. releasing motion that we're going yeah, to Oh, yes. Well, Michael, we've, we've gone over pretty much an overview of some of the things that we're going to be talking about today, so I think, it, you know, I think we should just get right to it. You ready to go to the specifics and putting put some uh, analysis to actual visual pictures. I'm sure that we're both ready. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> 